once a week, early in the morning, some unusual medical supplies arrive at London Heathrow. A consignment of radioactive molybdenum, molybdenum-99, all the way from a nuclear reactor in Canada. And now some of it is due to arrive here at the Middlesex Hospital in London. You see, molybdenum-99 is the starting point for some interesting imaging techniques which actually involve injecting patients with radioactive material. Here comes the van now. Hello? Mm, thank you. Gosh, it's quite heavy. Now, the first stop is the radio pharmacy. Inside this black box is a blue box, which I'm now going to hand over to Dominic, who's the radio pharmacist. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Here it is for you. Thank you. Now, the blue box is called a technetium generator. This is because most of the molybdenum-99, which is in there at the moment, will, over the next few days, decay into technetium-99M. And that's what we need for our imaging. Molybdenum-99 has a half-life of 66.7 hours, and so a fresh generator arrives here at the hospital every week, thereby ensuring a steady supply of technetium. The radio pharmacist's task each morning is to extract the technetium produced during the previous 24 hours. He draws saline solution through the generator using an evacuated elution vial. Soon the vial is full of saline, rich in technetium 99M in the form of protechnitate ions. Finally, he combines the technetium with a carrier drug to form a radioactive tracer because technetium 99M is radioactive too. But it has a half-life of just six hours and when it decays, it produces gamma rays. The carrier drug is chosen to accumulate in the part of the body whose function we want to study. Technetium 99M is the most commonly used radioactive material in nuclear medicine, as this branch of medicine is called, but there are others. For example, thallium 201 is often used for looking at heart muscle and iodine 131 for the thyroid gland. Once the tracer has been prepared, it is injected into the patient. Then it's a question of waiting, typically for a couple of hours, for the tracer to accumulate in the target organs. Now we are ready to create an image using the gamma rays given off by the decaying technetium 99M. And for that, we need a gamma camera. This is how it works in practice. The patient lays on the bed, and the camera head is positioned by the radiographer so that scanning can take place. The task of the gamma camera is to create a map of where in the body the gamma rays are coming from. To do that, the body part, in this case the head, is scanned by the gamma camera detector head, a big circular structure. Notice that unlike in X-ray imaging, where we pass X-rays through the organs we want to examine, in this technique, the gamma rays are coming from inside the body. The detector head contains three main components. A lead collimator, a large thin crystal of sodium iodide, and a set of photomultiplier tubes. These are the collimators. As you can see, they're extremely heavy. Now these are used to absorb the gamma rays which come at it at an angle except for those which travel at a right angle and pass straight through these tiny little holes and hit a crystal, which is rather like this, except much larger. When the gamma rays hit the crystal, they produce a tiny flash of light, which is picked up by this photomultiplier and amplified to produce an electrical signal. As we saw in the diagram, there is a whole array of photomultiplier tubes and they all send their electrical outputs to a computer which assembles the information into an image on the computer screen. Since the technetium is distributed throughout the patient's blood, lots of gamma rays come from those parts of the brain with a rich blood supply. The computer color codes them orange. 
By contrast, those areas receiving little blood are coded blue. This brain scan is normal, but if the patient had had a stroke, for example, the damaged tissues would have shown up dark blue or even black. According to Dr. Costa, a consultant physician at the Middlesex Hospital in London, the great strength of gamma camera imaging is that it enables us to diagnose diseases by finding out if the body's normal physiological processes are disrupted. For example, here is a series of scans showing a pair of kidneys at various times after the patient was injected with a technetium labeled drug. The kidneys cleanse the blood of unwanted chemicals, including the radio tracer. In the healthy left kidney, this is soon carried away to the bladder in the patient's urine. But in the right kidney, an obstruction stops the urine from draining away efficiently, and it accumulates there, giving off lots of gamma rays. Then there are bone scans. When a patient has a tumour, it is vital to find out if it has spread to other organs, especially the bones. Cancerous bone absorbs the radio tracer faster than healthy bone, and so it shows up bright white. The patient on the right has a tumour in the right kidney, which sadly has spread to the base of the spine. The two bright white spots are secondary tumours. Notice the diseased kidney doesn't show up at all, because it isn't functioning. The news was happier for the young man in the middle, who's been scanned from the front. You can tell it's a young person because the bright white areas show the growth plates where the bones are still growing. As you can see, part of the young man's right femur is missing. It was removed because of a tumour and this scan was performed to confirm that the cancer had not spread. As Dr. Costa says, the main advantage of gamma camera imaging is that we can use it to study the function of the various organs rather than just their shape, size and position in the body. Physiology rather than anatomy.